From the Library of Maria Menounos, this is Book Circle Online, featuring in-depth discussion, insight, news, and commentary on all the world's leading book titles and their authors. And now, Book Circle Online. Hey everybody, this is Book Circle Online. I'm your host, Jeffrey Masters, and today we're here with Melissa De La Cruz, the best-selling author of many books, including the Blue Blood series, The Witches of East End, and most recently, The Ring and the Crown. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me, Jeff. It's great Absolutely. to be here. Yes, it's great to meet you finally. Thanks. Yeah, so this is your first foray into historical fantasy fiction, I guess we can say. Yes. Uh, what was it about this time period that made you want to write about it? Um, uh, let me see, Downton Abbey. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know, I, actually, other than Downton Abbey, really, Edith Wharton. I kind of oh, really? went through this phase of reading, rereading a lot of the Edith Wharton books. Yeah. And one of them uh, that kind of stuck out was The Buccaneers, which was about American girls going over to England to try to marry rich, titled okay. English lords. That was her last book? That was her last okay. book, yes. And uh, and I just, I just thought it was such a funny and interesting trope because the girls would go over and they were come you know they came from chicago meat fortunes newport you know uh, railroad fortunes so in america they lived with such luxury and they thought okay what's more than luxury a title all right i want a title so they went over there and they would get a title but then they'd have to live in england which was like damp and the castles were like drafty and it was not at all like being a princess oh, so i funny. just thought that was so funny like you know <laughs> being a princess is not what you think so. oh and was that like fairly common for women back then to like make the trek yeah definitely it was kind of like what else can we buy with all this gobs of money that we have in the gilded wow. age you know and they had really kind of sad marriages where they didn't really understand you know the british people who would marry them you know for their money you know yeah. and, and it was just i just thought that it was so sad that you know they thought that they were getting their girls everything and then, yeah. you know really they probably should have stayed home in chicago in the fabulous oh, that's, <laughs> house they had oh. i mean it's very clear in the book that like everyone who's a royalty mm -hmm. hated it and everyone yeah. who was not wanted desperately yes. to be it yes i forgot yeah. like what a threat the royals were like being in that position oh definitely I mean, I always sympathize with characters who on the outside looks like they have everything, you yeah. know, and then in the inside, you know, they're just struggling or maybe they hate it. You know, they don't want to be princess or a prince. They have to marry certain people. You know, Princess Die was also a big inspiration. <laughs> oh, I see. Did you have to do a lot of research for the time period or did you kind of know already? Um, I did a lot of research, but because it's an alternate uh, fantasy, right. I didn't have to stick to anything you know, I, I didn't have to be that factual, so I could make up stuff. So that was kind of oh, fun. Oh, that's a nice little... Yeah. How did you come up with the, um, the, the Americans not winning the war? Because I had to reread that sentence four times. Yeah. I said, am I understanding this correctly? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I wanted it to have kind of a twist, like an alternate time period. Okay. And so I thought, you know, what would be interesting would be if the Americans lost the war and we were still a colony. Uh, and then even going beyond that was what if the French uh, lost the Hundred Years War oh, in yeah. the 1400s and then, you know, became part of England. So it just kind of became like, you know, more twisting of history. Like, how far can I go back? Yeah. <laughs> and I thought this time period was so interesting because like with the emerging technologies and electricity yes. kind of juxtaposed with the magic. Yes. No. And right. It's kind of fun. Like, because I always think of electricity as magic also. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And of course, back then, if it's just appearing, like, yeah. absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, totally. Yeah, that was interesting. Yeah, I love that. Um, is there a, uh, as like a uh, fantasy writer, mm. a lot of your work, is there pressure to make your like witches and your magic different than other stories? I think so. I think everybody wants to be original and unique. And yeah. sometimes it, it's kind of hard because everybody's reinventing. Um, of course. And especially with vampires, you know, with Twilight and my Blue Blood series, like there was definitely a feeling, I think, from our generation of writers who did not want to write the usual blood sucking Dracula or Anne Rice, you know, yeah. vampire book. But now, because everybody has kind of you know reinvented the genre so much i feel like we should go back to the old you know oh really yeah so you know i i feel like you know you do need to create something that's different from other uh fantasy books that are out there you know and but, you do a lot of reading of others to like see what they're doing and like how to solve magic related problems yes and no okay. you know it's funny because i also like you don't want to be too influenced but it's good to know what is out there so i try to keep a balance oh i like that yeah um as an author, looking at your like body of work, you've been able to um, 
transition between genders. Nope, I'm going to say genres. <laughs> <laughs> yes, John. If you're a transgender, I would like to talk about that. Yeah, but sure. um, <laughs> sorry, I'm actually reading a book by um, Kate Bornstein. Is it the the teen trans? Uh, no, no, it's called a uh, queer and pleasant danger, oh. and then gender outlaws. Oh. So it's like on the mind, yeah. I guess. <laughs> um, <laughs> but back to your work. Um, you're transitioning genres. Yes. Was that intentional as a writer? Yeah, you know, um, I think in the beginning, it probably was not as intentional as it was kind of more strategic because um, my editor left uh, one publishing house, moved to a different one, and she said, uh, do you want to write something that's a little different from what you're doing? Because uh, I was kind of doing lighter, uh, contemporary, more kind of chick lit books. Yeah. And she said, would you like to do something darker? And I said, oh, my God, I would love to do something darker. I would love to write about vampires. So that was the first time I was able to, you know, leave oh. my original genre. And then after that, it kind of became like, oh, what am I interested in now? Maybe I'll do adults. You know, maybe I'll do witches. Maybe. And then when I pitched uh, Hyperion, The Ring and the Crown, I said, I want to do a historical fantasy. And they were just really excited. They were like, okay. awesome. We want, we want that. Everybody wants something new. Yeah, you know? definitely. So mm. is like p are authors who like stick in one genre, is that because of like their own preference or because like the publishing world? I of? think it's a little bit of both, oh, really? you know, and, and it's nice to have people who trust you enough when you jump to a different genre. Definitely. Yeah. You, know? you cover like a wild, a wide map of them. I kept yeah. reading the list and I was like, oh, that's really interesting. <laughs> I know. I've done a middle grade as well. So <laughs> yeah. And lots of collaborations. Too. A lot, I like to collaborate because writing is so... Um, solitary yeah so it's nice to edit anthologies it's nice to work with other writers you know and uh you know just to have colleagues <laughs> yeah Where, do you, is there a genre you think you'll head into next i would love to do the my favorite genre is the cooking memoir oh really <laughs> so, so i was just reading um uh, molly weisenberg's the lancy and i love her work and i love and i was like one day i'm gonna write a cooking memoir <laughs> so you cook then no no <laughs> How is that going to work? <laughs> I know. It'll be a memoir of me trying to cook. <laughs> Great. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think that's like next on your list is I the know. memoir. Yes. Like we want to know about like who's in writing all these like famous stories. You know, that might be something. I was thinking about how I could like, because it is something that I get asked about a lot. It's like, how do you, you know, work on so many books at a time yeah. and, and different genres? And I was like, oh, I could probably write a memoir about that. And <laughs> everybody would know the answer. <laughs> so are you constantly writing like many different books at uh, once? At different stages. So I'll have okay. like a book in an outline stage. I'll have a book in a first draft stage. I'll have a book in final draft stage. And then I'll have a book in proofs. Wow. Yeah, it gets a little <laughs> overwhelming. <laughs> Has that kind of always been your process as well? You know, I like to work on a lot of different things and a lot of different genres. I can't do like a dark book and then another dark book. I like to do a dark book and then a lighter book or to transfer from adult to teen. Um, yeah. I basically don't like to work, so I always have to feel like I'm cheating on my job, <laughs> So, which is why I have so many jobs. So you're cheating on <laughs> books with different books. Exactly. That's brilliant. That's great advice for <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> any authors watching. Yes. Oh, wow, wow. This book kind of had some like more adult themes in it. Which with, like the sex and mm -hmm. like the rape was yeah. that ever a problem with the publisher at all uh you know i no not at all oh, and, you really? know we talked about um you know the time period and i said i really wanted to show how difficult it was for women at that time if you didn't have a male protector you know if you didn't have a if your dad died and you were taken in by this guardian you know yeah and what you know he could do whatever he wanted with you and if he was not a respectable person you know it was kind of open to that kind of you know terrible tragedy so yeah you know so i did want to kind of like show you know kind of the sad part of that world and you know a little bit of like you know kind of showing um you know how different it is from our world now of course you know and like the sad part of that world mm -hmm. yet dressed up in like the gowns exactly and jewels. like all the dirt underneath the glitter <laughs> oh i like that a lot i just say i really love the relationship of um Mary Victoria yes. Marie uh -huh. uh, and Wolf I just was like a nice platonic yeah. mature relationship and then mm -hmm. you know, of course the ending happens yes. which maybe we'll spoil later but um, <laughs> it just was uh, it was nice to see people who like respect each other like speaking honestly right and I feel like there's not enough of that you know maybe in um, teen literature of just have, being friends with yeah. somebody and like kind of yeah respecting each other 
you know, for whoever they are as a person and not just being so attracted to of somebody. Of course, or especially in that time period, like so many yeah. like, pretenses. Yeah. And um, there were so many moving pieces in this book that ultimately came together. How does one writing a book keep those moving pieces? Um, and they come together at the end mm -hmm. and like it makes sense. But mm -hmm. how do you make it not obvious? You know, it's hard. I What I do is I write a big outline. So I had a huge outline for this book and I knew all the chess pieces and I kind of knew the ending. I definitely knew the ending. Um, but as you write them, you want it to be surprising. Yeah. So uh, I would rewrite certain things and to make sure that uh, it wasn't obvious. Of you course. Know? So yeah, planning and then kind of like a little bit of spontaneous. And writing. so you're like an outline girl. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. But only to a point, because I also feel like if you uh, outline your book so much that there's nothing exciting about it for the reader. Like I, I, li I like to be surprised as well. Oh, you so know? if you're like excited writing it, then yeah. you think the reader will like that. Yeah, or there are certain things that I changed like in the outline because the characters, I was like, oh, she would never do that. So I'd be like, okay, if she would never do that, then what would she do? Oh, wow. You know? And you write so many series. Is this going to be a series as well? Yes, it is. Oh, really? Yes. So yeah. what is next for some of these characters? Uh, we are going to see the honeymoon. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see what happens to Ronan. Okay. Um, and uh, we'll kind of see more of her trajectory. And uh, we'll see, uh, you know, there's kind of this kind of brewing war against magic, you know. So oh, wow. magic, you know, kind of... Uh, Will it fade or will it stay, you know? Oh, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> and then I don't want to ask like mm -hmm. a hacky question, yeah. but you've um, <laughs> like the PG questions. Yeah. You've written so many books. Mm -hmm. um, where do you like, keep finding the inspiration for more? Uh, you know, it's kind of funny. I think writers just have a hundred million ideas. Like these are not even all the books I want to write. You oh, know? really? And if you ask any writer, they'll tell you, oh my God, ideas. Like I, we have them all the time. <laughs> and do you write them down when they come to you? You know, I think I write down the ones that stay. So I'll have like half, you know, finished proposals or even half finished books that just, you know, uh, I couldn't make work. So, oh. yeah. So it's this is not even everything that I want to do. And, and my husband and I, we work on books together. So we'll talk about things. And we'll be like, God, wouldn't that be cool if we could do that? I'm like, honey, we're contracted up to, you know, <laughs> like we'll wait until, you know. <laughs> so you have many stories like moving around in your mind at yeah, once. Yeah, you know, it's nice to kind of, I, I, I like to keep in touch with the culture. I like to see what people are interested in, you know. Yeah. So, you just read a lot and then you'll be like, oh, well, what if this happened or what if, you know, that would make a good idea? Yeah. And like historical fiction is like a very trendy subject nowadays. Yeah, I think so. Um, hopefully. Yeah. Game of Thrones, you know. <laughs> <laughs> now, when one book mm -hmm. gets turned into a movie or a TV show, does it kind of like turn other eyes onto your other work as well? Uh, yeah. Um, definitely. It opens a lot more doors. Uh and, you know, even with being uh, part of the vampire zeitgeist, that was very kind of exciting to be like, oh, wow, people are really interested in this, you know? Yeah. And uh, and then it's kind of like, well, what do, what do I want to do with it? You know, yeah, it's interesting, too, it? that vampires have not, like, left. Yeah, they're still there. <laughs> yeah, like, and they're still trendy, and I yeah. don't understand it. <laughs> yeah, it's a long <laughs> gestation, I guess. <laughs> yeah, totally. So with um, Witches of East End... It just got picked up for a second season, right? Yes. Congratulations. Thank you. That's huge. Yeah. How much input did you have on that creation? Uh, none. <laughs> really? <laughs> I mean, I have to say, no, that's not true. Um, I The most control that any writer has is picking who gets to adapt your work. And, and then it's out of your hands. And then it's pretty much out of your hands. Really? I consult on the show and I send some notes over. Um, and I do a lot of the promotion. Um, but I actually like being the godmother. Like I yeah. like uh, being part of it, but also that it's not my entire life. Oh, you know? really? So I, I find it really, it's a really like kind of pleasant place because... You know, I know what's happening and they tell me and I'll kind of suggest some things. And, you know, there's so many layers above me <laughs> who get to oh, decide wow. what happens. So. Well, that's a nice, like, fresh perspective. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I think because I'd had so much stuff optioned and we'd gone through so, you know, down the road and that when witches happened, I was really like, oh, who knows if this will happen? You know, nothing's happened. Oh, and I'd read a lot of scripts based on my work that I didn't like very much. And I thought, oh, you know, we'll see. But when I read this script, um, 
it just was so easy. Erwin uh, Stoff, who basically decided to produce uh, the show, and he's the one who picked Witches. Um, uh, and then Lifetime also picked the book. Like, they were really interested in it. Wow. So they called us. We were already kind of setting up. And it was just kind of this kind of, I don't know, it was just really pleasant. And Erwin was like, oh, it's going to happen. And I was like, and I was like, Erwin says it's going to happen. And I just stopped wow. worrying about it. So And it did. And the script that Maggie wrote was amazing. And it actually brought me to tears because I really felt like she had read the book and understood it so well and yeah. then turned it you know kind of trans you know transformed it into a tv show wow so i'm, I'm the biggest fan i love watching oh good the show. <laughs> what was it like watching it on tv the first time it was weird you know it's like you're really proud and nervous um but you really feel like you know what i understood when i watch it because i've had friends whose stuff has become made movies and they'll say sure. you know you really feel like a godmother like it's not my vision of the book but it's somebody else's vision but i like their vision yeah so and also know. it's the one that got made and it's First, the one that one got that made didn't. yeah no oh, and wow. you just see so many people working so hard yeah. to make it work and you know i don't even really see the changes you know some some fans, very few, you know, were like, oh, they've changed the name, or they've changed this. And I'm just like, really? I didn't even notice. Oh, I was just, no. <laughs> you know, they kept the family. They kept the love triangle. They kept yeah. the Norse mythology. You know, and I know so. that there's like a team of writers writing it. Mm -hmm. How are they bound at all to the books and the storylines, or are they kind of on their own? I think they're pretty much on their own. They kind of buy the world and the characters and then as much of the story as they can use, and then it's a TV show, so wow. they so need to... It's there yeah. to, like for inspiration, but not to like follow by book. Oh yeah, no, no. They oh, wow. there are a lot of nods to the book, and there's a lot of stuff that's in the books that's on the show, which is kind of fun. And you know, but we also talked about you know how it would be fun for people to have two versions. You know, like if you wanted to read the books, you would get a whole other story. Yeah. And you know, and it wouldn't be a novelization. And then if you wanted to watch the TV show. It wouldn't just be, you know, something that was, you know, I don't know. We just thought that would be kind of cool for, for yeah. fans too. I go back and forth on it, but I mm -hmm. kind of am now at the place where I don't mind a lot of big changes because yeah. I know they have to happen. And oh, yeah. I want it to be a good movie. Sometimes yeah. if it falls it by the book, oh, I can't enjoy it. Yeah, totally. I feel like the first two Harry Potter movies were so literal, you know? Yeah. So, and the third one that took a little bit more, you know, freedom was a, a great movie. So, yeah, totally. Yeah. Are there any other works that are like in the, makings with Hollywood like possibly uh I a little bit but nothing that you know is uh, uh as definite yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know <laughs> so what are you working on now did you said another book with your husband yes we have a series called uh, Heart of Dread which is our dragon series and okay. Stolen comes out the second book in the series comes out this November and then the Blue Blood spinoff Vampires of Manhattan is coming out in September so that's kind of fun. So you're a very busy lady. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I had to put down my editing pen to rush over. <laughs> oh, okay. well, I'm glad you did. <laughs> yeah. Um, in the first book in that series is Frozen, right? Yeah, in Heart of Dread, yes. Heart of Dread, right. Yes. Um, when I read that, I said, did she write the book that Frozen is based on? Oh, my God. <laughs> we, we, well, we hope people buy it. <laughs> Let yeah. it go, Jeff. <laughs> So we won't say yes or no to yeah. the audience. Yeah, frozen. <laughs> You'll just see for yourself. Yeah. Lots of confusion there. Yes. I was like, and it's like a husband wife team who wrote that movie. I was like, this is huge. Oh, that is so funny. <laughs> yeah, I know. And it's funny because we didn't know that that was the title of the Disney movie, I think, until it was too late to change ours. Uh, and ours is a dark, uh, you know, post-apocalyptic fantasy uh, book with dragons. So it's a little different from, from the Disney uh, no. Is there... I feel like there's so much of like movies, but also books like that go in phases mm. of like the um, the vampires, the post apocalyptic. Yeah. Yeah. How does everybody kind of like tune into that? How is like everybody on the same page writing? Yeah, you know, it's 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 interesting. I think that you know, um, especially with the vampire thing, I just feel like I I definitely just felt like I got lucky, you know. Um, because I felt a sense that I had read a lot of Stephen King and Anne Rice, and then there was, no, and I didn't actually watch Buffy. So, and even so, when I was writing it, Buffy was already off the air for many years. Yeah. So I just felt like, oh wow, it felt like it was time for a new vampire book, and I thought, oh, I'll write it. And then I turned in Blue Bloods, and I went to the store, and I saw Twilight it had come out that week. And oh. I said, oh, no, somebody else had my same idea. And I was really bummed. And then I realized, you know, this was actually a good thing, you know, like for once, you Interest. know. Interest, yeah. yeah. It's so interesting, yeah. too, that it's like 
it's not like people copying each other. Like they're all just like out on the market at the same oh, time. Yeah. Like there's no way they could have been like writing quickly. Yeah, no. It's like everybody having the same name for their kids. Yeah. You know, like there were so many Jacks at one point <laughs> in preschool. It's like, oh my God. I know. Everybody and said ev- Jack, Lily, and Olivia, you know. So. <laughs> <laughs> and it's everything from like young yeah. adult books to mm-hmm. um, adult books. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Now, I heard you use the word chiclet before. Mm-hmm. Is that like a word that you're totally cool with? I'm totally cool with it. Okay. I'm cool with chiclet. I'm cool with pink. I'm cool with girly. <laughs> you know, I just feel like I'm very proud to be a girl who writes about girl stuff. And, you know, this is why the ring and the crown is very pink. I got yeah. so tired of people kind of putting down girly books or using chiclet as like a, you know, defamatory thing to yeah. say and I'm just like no you know and in talking to authors mm-hmm. I never can find the right labels for mm-hmm. lack of a better word to call the book like mm-hmm. I, I said like historical fantasy fiction yeah. but I wasn't actually happy with that oh, <laughs> it's just kind of what I like good. settled on yeah no I like that I just feel like there's not like one label that can encompass like so many books oh yeah definitely eh. definitely yeah I don't know it's like <laughs> it's interesting like the labeling I guess yeah. it's to let it's people like know marketing. what they want to know yeah it's just marketing you yeah know? my young adult book some of them are published as adult books in Germany and oh, Italy, right. you know, because they don't really have a young adult or children's publishing arm. They're just like, these are our books, you know. So. <laughs> <laughs> and are your books, uh, do your kids read them at all? My daughter is seven, so okay. not yet, but she's just starting to be interested. So they they, they can realize that like their mom's an author and oh, dad, yeah. I guess. Oh, yeah. No, definitely. It's starting to kind of sink in, you know, okay. whereas before it really wasn't. Like she saw the trailer for The Ring and the Crown and she was so fascinated by it. She wanted me to tell her exactly what was happening. And then she had some notes for book two. <laughs> she was oh, like, good. <laughs> Blah, 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 going to die, mama. So. Oh, that's sweet. <laughs> I love to. How much of uh, Fresh Off the Boat was based on your own life? Uh, I have to say, uh, because my family's still alive, it's fiction. Okay. <laughs> but I would have to say probably 90%. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It was definitely inspired by my childhood. Sometimes it's easier to say things that are like the truth under the gauze of fiction. Oh, definitely. No, that didn't happen. I promise. Yeah. (laughs) Like, no, that's not you, mom. (laughs) Um, And back to the PG questions. Mm -hmm. How did you, um, um, you're from the Philippines? Mm -hmm. Yes. De La Cruz, is that not Uh Hispanic? Uh, or is it also the, Filipino? The Philippines is a span was a Spanish colony oh. for 500 years. So many of us have Spanish blood, Chinese blood, and Filipino. Oh, that makes blood. perfect sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Minor yeah. details are trying to work out. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then, so what, coming up this year is the uh, the sequel to Frozen: Stolen. It's coming uh-huh. up. Yes. Okay. And yep. what else is coming? Just uh, Vampires of Manhattan, September. Uh, and then a couple of uh, projects I can't talk about yet. Sure. Um, books, yeah. though? Books, yes. All right. And and some other not books. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so another book coming out for every season. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to hit it all. <laughs> and um, I know you said you wanted to write a memoir. That's not even in the works yet, though. No, it's not. Although it's something that I pick up once in a while. Sure. You know, and think, oh, I should do something with it. You know. It's funny talking to mm-hmm. authors that they write their mm-hmm. fiction and they love writing it and mm-hmm. they're continuing to mm-hmm. um but everyone has that like memoir off in the distance oh yeah you know i, I think we all like it, the journaling you know yeah <laughs> it's almost sacrilegious to like mm-hmm. write down your life story like while it's like in the mid oh in yeah the midst. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh. um and i know you're very active on social media where can we find you until oh sure yeah, yeah. twitter.com slash melissa de cruz is i'm most active on twitter Great. And then also, I, so much information is on your website, we have to mention. Yes. Melissa Dash de la Cruz. Is that uh, correct? Yes. Yep. Perfect. Because somebody bought Melissa de la Cruz a long time ago and keeps trying to sell it to me. And I'm oh, like, no. no. I'm a Dash too. It's fine. <laughs> <All right? laughs> the same I'm situation. Like, I'm not buying it from you. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much. This was so much fun. <laughs> thank you so much, Jeff. This yeah. was the most fun interview. Oh, thank you. Tell your friends. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll see everybody next time. Thank you. From managing editor Jason Squamata, executive producers Maria Menounos, Phil Svitek, and Kevin Undergaro, we would like to thank you for tuning in to Book Circle Online. For more discussion, go to bookcircleonline.com. And if you have comments, questions, or book title suggestions, write us at info at bookcircleonline.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this is Book Circle Online. BCO, join the circle. transition between genders. Nope, I'm going to say genres. (laughs) (laughs) Yes!
question. <laughs> if you were transgender, I would like to talk about that. Yeah, but sure. um, <laughs> sorry, I'm actually reading a book by um, Kate Bornstein. Is it the the teen transgender? Uh, no, no, it's called a uh, queer and pleasant danger, oh. and then gender outlaws. Oh. So it's like on the mind, yeah. I guess. <laughs> um, <laughs> but back to your work. Um, you're transitioning genres. Yes. Was that intentional as a writer? Yeah, you know, um, I think in the beginning, it probably was not as intentional as it was kind of more strategic because um, my editor left uh, one publishing house, moved to a different one, and she said, uh, do you want to write something that's a little different from what you're doing? Because uh, I was kind of doing lighter, uh, contemporary, more kind of chick lit books. Yeah. And she said, would you like to do something darker? And I said, oh, my God, I would love to do something darker. I would love to write about vampires. So that was the first time I was able to, you know, leave oh. my original genre. And then after that, it kind of became like, oh, what am I interested in now? Maybe I'll do adults. You know, maybe I'll do witches. Maybe. And then when I pitched uh, Hyperion, The Ring and the Crown, I said, I want to do a historical fantasy. And they were just really excited. They were like, okay. awesome. We want We want that. Everybody wants something new. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So mm. is like, are authors who like stick in one genre? Is that because of like their own preference or because like the publishing world? I think of? it's a little bit of both, oh, really? you know, and, and it's nice to have people who trust you enough when you jump to a different genre. Definitely. Yeah. You, know? you cover like a wild, a wide map of them. I yeah. kept reading the list and I was like, oh, princess. Oh, so I funny. just thought that was so funny. Like, you know, <laughs> being a princess is not what you think. So. Oh, and was that like fairly common for women back then to like make the trek? Yeah, definitely. It was kind of like, what else can we buy with all this gobs of money that we have in the Gilded wow. Age, you know? And they had really kind of sad marriages where they didn't really understand, you know, the British people who would marry them, you know, for their money, you know? Yeah. And, and it was just, I just thought that it was so sad that, you know, they thought that they were getting their girls everything. And, then, yeah. you know, really, they probably should have stayed home in Chicago in the fabulous oh, that's, <laughs> house they had. Oh. I mean, it's very clear in the book that, like, everyone who was a royalty mm -hmm. hated it. And everyone yeah. who was not won it desperately yes. to be it. Yes. I forgot, yeah. like, what a threat the royals were, like, being in that position. Oh, definitely. I mean, I always sympathize with characters who on the outside looks like they have everything, you know, yeah. and then in the inside, you know, they're just struggling or maybe they hate it. You know, they don't want to be princess or a prince. They have to marry certain people. You know, Princess Die was also a big inspiration. <laughs> oh, I see. Did you have to do a lot of research for the time period or did you kind of know already? Um, I did a lot of research, but because it's an alternate uh, fantasy, right. I didn't have to stick to anything you know, I, I didn't have to be that factual, so I could make up stuff. So that was kind of oh, fun. that's a nice little. Yeah. How did you come up with the um, the, the Americans not winning the war? Because I had to reread that sentence four times. Yeah. I said, "Am I understanding this correctly?" Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I wanted it to have kind of a twist, like an alternate time period. Okay. And so I thought, you know, what would be interesting would be if the Americans lost the war and we were still a colony. Uh, and then even going beyond that was what if the French uh, lost the Hundred Years' War oh, in yeah. the 1400s and then, you know, became part of England. So it just kind of became like, you know, more twisting of history. Like, how far can I go back? Yeah. <laughs> and I thought this time period was so interesting because like with the emerging technologies and electricity yes. kind of juxtaposed with the magic. Yes. No. And right. It's kind of fun. Like, because I always think of electricity as magic also. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And of course, back then, if it's just appearing, like, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, totally. Yeah, that was interesting. Yeah, I love that. Um, is there a, uh, as like a uh, fantasy writer, mm. a lot of your work, is there pressure to make your like witches and your magic different than other stories? I think so. I think everybody wants to be original and unique. And yeah. sometimes it, it's kind of hard because everybody's reinventing. Um, of course. And especially with vampires, you know, with Twilight and my Blue Blood series, like there was definitely a feeling, I think, from our generation of writers who did not want to write the usual blood sucking Dracula or Anne Rice, you know, yeah. vampire book. But now, because everybody has kind of you know reinvented the genre so much i feel like we should go back to the old you know oh really yeah so you know i i feel like you know you do need to create something that's different from other uh fantasy books that are out there you know and but, you do a lot of reading of others to like see what they're doing and like how to solve magic related problems yes and no okay. you know it's funny because i also like you don't want to be too influenced but it's good to know what is out there so i try to keep a balance oh i like that yeah um 
as an author, looking at your like body of work, you've been able to. Um, that's really interesting. <laughs> I know I've done a middle grade as well, so <laughs> yeah, and lots of collaborations. Too. Lot, I like to collaborate because writing is so um, solitary. Yeah. So it's nice to edit anthologies. It's nice to work with other writers, you know, and uh, you know, just to have colleagues. <laughs> yeah. Where, do you, is there a genre you think you'll head into next? I would love to do the, my favorite genre is the cooking memoir. Oh, really? <laughs> so, so I was just reading um, uh, Molly Weisenberg's The Lancy, and I love her work, and I love, and I was like, one day I'm going to write a cooking memoir. So you cook then? <laughs> no. No? <laughs> How is that going to work? <laughs> I know. It'll be a memoir of me trying to cook. <laughs> Great. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think that's like next on your list is I the know. memoir. Yes. Like we want to know about like who's in writing all these like famous stories. You know, that might be something. I was thinking about how I could like, because it is something that I get asked about a lot. It's like, how do you, you know, work on so many books at a time yeah. and, and different genres? And I was like, oh, I could probably write a memoir about that. And everybody would know the answer. <laughs> so are you constantly writing like many different books at uh, once? At different stages. So I'll have okay. like a book in an outline stage. I'll have a book in a first draft stage. I'll have a book in final draft stage. And then I'll have a book in proofs. Wow. Yeah, it gets a little <laughs> overwhelming. <laughs> Has that kind of always been your process as well? You know, I like to work on a lot of different things and a lot of different genres. I can't do like a dark book and then another dark book. I like to do a dark book and then a lighter book or to transfer from adult to teen. Um, yeah. I basically don't like to work, so I always have to feel like I'm cheating on my job, <laughs> So, which is why I have so many jobs. So you're cheating on <laughs> books with different books. Exactly. That's brilliant. <laughs> From the Library of Maria Menounos, this is Book Circle Online, featuring in-depth discussion, insight, news, and commentary on all the world's leading book titles and their authors. And now, Book Circle Online. Hey, everybody. This is Book Circle Online. I'm your host, Jeffrey Masters. And today we're here with Melissa De La Cruz, the best-selling author of many books, including the Blue Blood series, The Witches of East End, and most recently, The Ring and the Crown. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me, Jeff. It's great Absolutely. to be here. Yes, it's great to meet you finally. Thanks. Yeah. So this is your first foray into historical fantasy fiction, I guess we can say. Yes. Uh, what was it about this time period that made you want to write about it? Um, uh, let me see. Downton Abbey. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know, I, actually, other than Downton Abbey, really Edith Wharton. I kind of oh, really? went through this phase of reading, rereading a lot of the Edith Wharton books. Yeah. And one of them uh, that kind of stuck out was The Buccaneers, which was about American girls going over to England to try to marry rich, titled okay. English lords. That was her last book? That was her last okay. book, yes. And uh, and I just, I just thought it was such a funny and interesting trope because the girls would go over and they were come you know they came from chicago meat fortunes newport you know uh, railroad fortunes so in america they lived with such luxury and they thought okay what's more than luxury a title all right i want a title so they went over there and they would get a title but then they'd have to live in england which was like damp and the castles were like drafty and it was not at all like being a